I want to really just impact the world with my music and then my brand is about representing women and women in the male dominated industry and just empowering them to be bold and to strive mm. in any male dominated industry that you know any industry period so listen to the play by play day by day what to do everybody and thanks for tuning in to the day by day podcast for your day by day broad Cast. I'm your host, Day with an I, not a Y. And for the love of dogs, please do not ask why. And today, we have a great one for y'all because we are joined by DC native female producer, Brown Sugar of Brown Sugar Productions. How are you? What to do? Welcome to the show. What's up? Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. I'm I'm excited that you're excited. Yeah. You're welcome for making this happen. I mean, listen, you reached out to me some time ago. Said, hey. I'm going to be in North Carolina this day. I'm trying to be on a show. I said, okay, bet. I took it with a grain of salt. <laughs> Lo and behold, you hit me up a week before and say, hey, we still on? I'm saying, yeah. Today, you pulled up and we here and we making it happen. So i like to, you know, thank you for that. Yeah. We're really committing to your word first and foremost because I have some people in North Charlotte mm -hmm. that have been saying they're going to be on this podcast and it's been, you know, weeks, months, and they, and they still didn't make it happen. But um, yeah, overall, I'm happy that you're here. We're going to talk about uh, the new, your first album first album first mm -hmm. studio album that you fully produce we're gonna get into all that um but yeah like i said from dc you're out here you um you traveled out here you're somewhat on a chitlin circuit if you would right like <laughs> a little you, bit yeah, yeah, a little yeah. Tour. so um let's talk about just the stops you've made and just what made you want to you know come out here to promote your album and whatnot and just mm -hmm. yeah what's what brought that to you really like all my family on my mom's side is from down south right so I got people's in Durham, I got people's here in Charlotte, but um, my grandmother, she's from Longburg, North Carolina. She was real deep, Southern, Southern. It sounds it. I've yeah, never heard of Longburg. Real, real deep <laughs> Southern. It. So I was like, I mean, dang, like for my first tour, why not go down South? Like mm -hmm. down South is like my second home, especially here in Charlotte. Like I went to Johnson C. Smith. So, you know, I spent the nice amount of time here in Charlotte and just down South in general, North Carolina in general, really. What do you like about North Carolina compared to back home? I love the Southern hospitality. That's number one. That's really number one for mm -hmm. me. Everybody is really friendly, even mm -hmm. when you go into the store. Like, it ain't really walking past nobody, not even speaking. Right. In Uptown um, or, you know, in D.C., mm -hmm. you get that a lot. You will walk past somebody, you won't even acknowledge them, really. Easily. It's just different down here. Yeah, that's always the number one thing I point out. I'm not from D.C., I'm from Maryland, but it's it's the, you know, tomato, tomato. I, I say the same thing, like, when I first moved out here, two years ago was my first time ever being in Charlotte. When mm -hmm. I first moved out here, it took some adjustments. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, when you get fully adjusted and you go back home and you try to do certain things in North Carolina that you try to do back home, you don't really get the same energy reciprocated from people. And you're like, oh, that's because I'm not down south. And you know, it's crazy. All right. So like, you know how they be saying like the city girls of D.C. or whatever, we be mugging and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I used to be one of those girls. Like I'm walking down the street, but this is my normal face. And they be like, why you look so mad? Mm -hmm. So when I came in with the school and I remember I went back home for a break, I was walking around smiling and stuff. Mm -hmm. They be like, you all happy? I'm like, well, damn. Like yeah. one moment y'all be like, I look mad. Now yeah. it's just like I'm smiling too yeah. much. Yeah. It's all about where you at. Um, Southern hospitality, I call it northern hostility. Mm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. I, I went home, same thing. I was um in Glen Burnie, Maryland, and I was at a park with my dog or some shit, and it was like some older white people out there. Mm -hmm. And I like waved at them or some shit and they looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> he was crazy. I was like, okay, yeah. You're like, what is he doing? Yeah, Why I'm like, is okay. he talking to us? <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely a difference. Um, so on you know, so on your um on your tour out here, uh, mm -hmm. your promotional tour out here, um, where have you been so far? So far I've been in, been to Durham. Durham. Yep, and then here in Charlotte. Shout out to Durham. Was it a uh, station or a podcast that you were on? It was a podcast. Nice, nice. Yep. Okay, matter of fact, we did talk about that. Let me ask mm -hmm. you something. Because mm -hmm. I asked you earlier, you know, was it a podcast or radio? And you said, you know, it's a podcast. You wish radio. I would love to do radio. Let me ask you. Um, because of the world that we're in today with how radio is, it's kind of, you know, dying down. Mm -hmm. um, remember the song Video Killed the Radio Star or it's Radio Show, whatever? Yeah, uh-huh. It's more than ever today, like, because I, you know, I have a good friend that works with Power 98 out here in Charlotte and Fox mm -hmm. 94, uh, Fox Sports Charlotte. And, you know, he said ever since COVID it has been going down. What would you, what would you want to be more on if you had to pick one? Mm -hmm. the ra A radio, like a radio interview, would you rather have your music playing in the background of someone's IG reels or story like LeBron James or Drake? 
mm. or a very well sought after podcast. Nowadays, I definitely would choose the IG because mm. that exposure is going to be crazy. Tenfold. And then you can really like, you just click on the music. Or even if they shout me out, you just go right to my page right then and there. And everything is So there. instant. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't that crazy how we're there now? But that's hard. Yeah, I would definitely choose that. But then again, I still would love to do a radio interview. Yeah. yeah. And then that's live too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I feel like, like if you think about it, as far as the music industry goes and making real money, the real money comes from radio spans. Really? Yeah, all these artists you see, these um, industry artists, they money coming from them radio spans, urban radio, all that. That's really like, that's where the bag come from. Even more so than streams? Because streams, they pay you like a half a cent per stream. Mm, that is true. You know what I mean? Like, I, the first week I dropped Shopped in a Day's Volume 2, I got like a thousand something streams. That ain't no money though. Mm. It, it don't add up for real, for real. So, how many streams do you need to get a legit check off of? Like millions. Millions. Wow. Hundred thousand millions, mm. cause I think if I'm not mistaken, if you get like a million streams, I think that's like, I think that's like a, a maybe ten k or something like that. One or million streams more. gives yeah. you ten k, or maybe more. And but I know it doesn't. It's not equal. It's not yeah. like a million streams a million dollars. Definitely yeah. not that. Was it better with a uh, hard copy CD days? Um, I I think. Streams are better, but either way, it was just it's just the amount, the amount of streams or sales you get. Mm. Do you think streams are as sought out after as actual album sales numbers were? Like everyone wanted to sell hard copy CDs and whatnot, and then mm -hmm. now with streams, it's like you don't when a, when a CD or album drops, you don't really hear about. The first thing you don't hear, the first thing you hear about isn't necessarily a certain song. It's about how many streams they had or are projected to have in the first week. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's uh, good or bad for, you know, creators of music? I don't think it's either. I think it's still the same as like CD days. It's like we sold this amount of copies the first week. Mm -hmm. and, that was, and that was just like we did this amount of streams the first week. Well, do you think people are more after streams and CD sales because it's easier to pick up a phone and hit boom mm -hmm. and that counts as a stream as opposed to actually going out to the store and grabbing a CD? Do you think that changes like the mentality that people have when trying to get certain stream numbers? Honestly, I don't. Yeah. I don't think it's a difference. I really? think it's really all the same. It's just it's just the way we're in now or, you know, the modern times we're in now. It's just mm -hmm. that's what it is. Like streams. Yeah. Just as the same as copy. So go buy my CD. Yeah. Available here, there, Target, da, 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 da. And then it was like, I stream my album, yeah. Apple Music, Tidal, YouTube, whatever. I think it's I think it's really equivalent. We're just adjusted. Yeah, it's just adjusted yeah. to the times. Yeah. That's how I look at it. What do you think? It uh, this is kind of like putting our future prediction hats on. What do you think it goes after streams? We went from we went from mm. tapes to vi or vinyls. We went from vinyls to tapes mm -hmm. to CDs to streams. What's mm -hmm. next? What do you think? I think that um, damn, I forget the name. So I'm tipping my tongue. Those goggles, those new goggles. Oh, no, how they be uh, NFTs. NFTs. I, I don't know. I don't know much about that, but I think that's like the new wave with everything. <laughs> yeah, and I, I can't even sit up here and act like I know what an NFT is. Yeah, I'm not really into it like that, yeah. but NFTs is a is a new thing, and I think that's a new wave. But other than that, I really don't know. The I NFT space kind of slowed down for a second, but I know doggy style so i know for a second doggy style was not available on any streaming platforms because snoop had it as an nft he had all death row music as an nft so doggy style mm -hmm. and the chronic i remember because i kept trying to listen to him like what the fuck uh for a minute their music wasn't available to stream because they were all nfts he mm -hmm. recently he recently put them back so now you can listen to it on apple music but i'm mm -hmm. interested to see what was the thought process of one putting it on NFTs and then what made them bring it back? Because like I said- I would too. Yeah. I would want to know. Yeah. Because yeah. like I said, NFTs have kind of died down. Like they're not, you know- I don't think the hype about people talking about it much, but I think it's still well, even, relevant. Even, even the value. The value dropped tremendously. Well, with crypto, all, all type of, you know, digital mm -hmm. currency and all that, that space has kind of died down in general. It's like, you know, uh, pretty low. Um, the price is wise because like a lot of people lost money on it. At least people that kept their money in it. Yeah. I don't know the far details, so I'm not going to get crazy into it. But I think that has something to do with Snoop bringing it back. But it might go back to it. I wouldn't be surprised if we could like 
do some type of digital mind chip scan <laughs> music playing in our brain. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, you know, anytime soon or whatnot. Yeah. Um, but let's let's talk about uh your new album. That's why we're here, right? Yeah, Trapped cool. in a Days, Volume Two. Yeah. Uh let's start with the name. Trapped in a Days. So I dropped volume one when I graduated from college in 2018, and I was just ready to just jump into my music, my career. That was my first project ever, but that one was all instrumentals, okay. just all beats and stuff. So I named it that because I literally was like trapped in a moment. Like it was my first time ever detoxing my body. So I did like a detox for that whole week. And then that's when I was like, okay, I'm gonna lock in. I'm gonna literally lock myself in my room and create and learn everything that it is that I love, don't like, whatever, with my music. So I just went into this headspace, and I was like, trapped in the days, trapped in the moments, trapped in these days and these times, and that's where the name came from. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then that, that's, so the volume one, was that, that wasn't necessarily like an actual album that you put out there, like no. the volume two? Because the album, I consider the album because I have actual artists on it. It's actual right. songs. Right. So I got plenty of projects that's really just instrumental, yeah. and I consider them just projects and EPs and stuff. But the album, we got artists on it, we got songs, we got real, you know, records on the mm -hmm. song. And this is crazy how, and and it's good for producers how like producers release albums now. Mm -hmm. Like that didn't come out as until recently. I think I don't quote quote uh, you know, don't quote me if I'm you know wrong, but maybe DJ Khaled yeah. was one of the first where like he's a producer, but he's dropping albums with songs from different artist mm -hmm. you know what i mean maybe gangster grills has something to do with that as well but i really like how like producers are like shit sometimes producers be the biggest rock stars in the room yeah you and i'm glad we're starting to get more of our shine now yeah you know what i mean because yeah. i feel like that's important but yeah dj Khaled, like, i always reference him because he really makes it make sense for what i do for real for real like if i tell people especially like an older person be like oh yeah i got an album they'll be like so you sing or rap and i'll be like no i'm a producer and then they'll be like huh and I'll be like, you know DJ Khaled? They'll be like, yeah. I'm like, it's pretty much like that. they would be like, oh, okay, I get it. It's like because of what he did, he kind of really opened up a door for me. Or, How so? Because it it makes sense in a way because of what he did. Like he really put, he did all the hard work. Like, mm -hmm. again, I still get the confusion from people like, okay, people that's not in music. They're right. not really creative. They're like, wait, okay. And then they'll hear the album. They'll be like, well, I didn't hear you sing or rap. It's like, well, I'm the producer. Like, I made the music. But so it's like when I reference him to people that know him, it just makes sense for them. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right, I get what you're doing. But if it wasn't really for him and what he did and how he paved the way, everybody would be confused and it'd be a little harder for me. Yeah, I definitely think he paved the way. Um, and a lot of producers do it. Mustard had one. Metro does it pretty often. I think DJ like, Drama. He's yeah, been drama. doing that for a while. Too. Yeah, and, and that's why I said the Gangster Grills. I think I said Khaled, mm -hmm. but then I was like, maybe Drama started it. He might have, really. With the Gangster Grills, you know, because he would get his shit off in the introduction. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, and then DJ Clue even had something like that before, like in the early 2000s and whatnot. Um, speaking of drama, getting his shit off in the beginning uh, is a, what is it, like a sound bite that, like a sound stamp that producers have mm -hmm. we're like talking not even talking just like that that sound indication that lets you know the producer is on that track oh like, yeah uh -huh. like uh like take if, yeah take Keith on it yeah 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 um do you have one of those and like have you yeah. yeah yeah i have one i actually recorded my little cousin yaya when she was three years old there we go <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so it's like put the brown sugar and that's my stamp. Exactly. That's my tag. Yeah, that's what it is. That's yeah, what I was tag. thinking. I couldn't, uh -huh. couldn't come up with the name of what number tag. But yeah, I think, you know, that's important. Like, that's all it takes for someone yeah. to know that who had what to do with this song actually being created mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, but shout out to, what's her name? Yaya? Yaya. Shout out to Yaya. Hey, Yaya. Um, <laughs> your personal favorite track on Trapped in a Day's Volume 2 and why? That is so hard. Everybody be asking me that. Um... Cause really it's like each day is a different vibe for me, right? But I this is hard. If I had to choose one, it would be chrome and leather with autumn labella. And that's because like I'm a real deep R and B soul girl. Mm -hmm. And that beat is a definition of a brown sugar R and B beat. Mm. And then she delivered 
how I really envisioned somebody body in that joint. Yeah. It was like, oh my God, like we really meshed on that track. Like even the connection with that track is deeper than any other song. So if I got to choose, it's definitely Chrome and Leather. Shout out to Chrome and Leather. Shout out to Chrome and Leather. You said that's the definition of a brown sugar type beat. I meant to ask you this in the beginning. How'd you even get the name Brown Sugar? Oh, good question. So my great aunt, Aunt Gladys, she passed away a couple years ago, but she used to call me that when I was a baby. So she'll be talking to my grandmother all the time. And I remember when I first decided I wanted to make beats and stuff, I didn't have a name yet. But one day she was on the phone with my grandmother and she was like, she was on speaker or something. She was like, tell Brown Sugar, I said, hey. And I was like, ooh, I'm mm. going to use that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how I came about. People be thinking I made it up, but no, it was it was given to me. Nah, I you can't make up your own nickname, right? Yeah, I think that's 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 trying to finesse the game. A you can, corny. Yeah, now nah, you can't do that. You can't you can't <laughs> make up your own nickname and try to run with it. It has to be delivered, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, by a family member or a peer. Um, I like that. And it fits yeah. you. It fits you. And I think that's why she used to call me that. It's my complexion. And yeah. so she used to wash me all the time mm -hmm. and stuff. So and I don't think I was the only person she called that though. I think she called her her grandbaby that too. So I think it might have been her thing. It's one of those like like OG nicknames. Yeah, they get, in a way. Like but sugar it dumpling. Stuck with me. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to use that. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, shout out to shout out to Aunt Gladys. Shout out to Aunt Gladys. Shout out to Grandma. I have a grandmother named Gladys as well, so that's mm -hmm. definitely a real. That's a real. <laughs> that's a real one right there. I can tell that's a real one. Um, but yeah, so you know, we got your favorite track on the album. Mm -hmm. um, how long did it take for you to produce the album entirely? Hmm. You know, but because this is my first album, I was trying to rush and put a date on it and put a date on it, and I had to keep pushing it back, pushing it back. It took me a couple of months. I would say maybe four or five months. Okay. Yeah. Sounds about right. Just like really gathering all my beats together because I create a lot. So I'm not the type of person I don't let I don't want to let beats go to waste. Mm. Like I'll have my list. I'll go back through. I don't care if I made it be a year ago. I'm gonna go back through that list. Like I do have maybe one or two beats on this album that I made probably like a year or two ago. Yeah. And it slaps today. It's like yeah. very timely. You said you go back. When you go back, do you like touch up beats that maybe you started? What do you mean by you go back? I'll go back to my list. Like, okay. so I use Logic Pro X. I'll go back and just listen to stuff. Cause mm -hmm. sometimes we create so much producers, we forget. Mm -hmm. So it's beats that's in there that I, I went back to and I'm like, damn, I forgot I made this. Okay. And then I'd be like, damn, when did I make this? Like right. I totally forget when right. I made it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're not the same person we were yesterday, let alone a month or a year ago. So mm -hmm. that's like you revisiting the old space you were in. Right. And again, trapped in a day. So yeah. every beat on here, I was literally trapped in a moment. So when I went back and listened, I'm like, I some of them I'm like, oh, I remember like I, I was going through some shit yep. that day and I made this. It's like, oh, this got to be on the album. Yep. That got to be on the album because that defines trapped in those days mm -hmm. and those times. Yeah. yeah. And it brings back and it brings back the nostalgia. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the album cover. Oh, OK. Let's talk about that, shall we? Yeah. So um, let me give first just my first thoughts when I seen the album cover. Um, it gave Dominatrix vibes. Uh -huh. Cause you're in the all black leather. Is that a belt or a whip in your mouth? Yeah, it was like a stray jacket I had on. It was a stray jacket. Yeah, so it was a bunch of different belts on it. Was it leather? Yeah, it was leather. Okay, so you had a leather stray jacket on in your mouth. Was that a belt or a whip? I guess that was like a belt. A belt. It was attached to the to the jacket. Yeah, it was, oh, like it was a belt. attached. To the, yeah, okay, it was a bunch okay. of straps okay, on it, and okay. it was a strap. Again, I'm going off a of first glance when mm -hmm. I first seen it. It was a dark background and whatnot. Um. So yeah, just describe, you know, that uh, you know, uh Yeah. The whole scenery, the aesthetics, just, you know, what did you want to bring with the album cover? Like right. and if I was way on or way off by assuming that, you know, it had like a dominatrix vibe to it. Yeah, in a way. So like I had a creative director, Jasmine. Shout out to Jasmine. Jasmine. Like she's a great like marketer and she's be having all these different visions and ideas. So I brought her along for the album because I was like, look. Usually I always work by myself, but I was like, I want a little team. I want a team together. I want somebody yeah. that, you know, I want different ideas. So I asked her and she automatically was like, I want to go like, we need to go for like some Missy vibes or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So a lot of people tell me they, they look at it and it reminds them of Missy, but she was like, um, yeah, like trapped in a day. She was like, maybe you trapped, maybe you're trapped in a jacket. 
it'd be this and that. And then she, at first she was thinking about days, like my eyes being in the days. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I think because I'm so early in my career, I still want to look sexy in a way. I don't mm -hmm. want to look weird yet. So I was like, I don't know about that idea, but I was like, okay, bet. Yeah, we could get a straight jacket, trapped in, da 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 da. Um, I had a makeup artist, of course. I had a stylist. So the stylist definitely came up with the idea of the, the jacket. And then, I don't know if you noticed, my nose ring connected to my ear. Mm. So they was like, let's get like one of those long nose rings. Like, you know what I mean? It was yeah. all a whole idea. And when I did the video shoot, I mean, when I did the um, okay, I see it. photo shoot, yeah, I was like, all right, I was just in the zone. I was like, yeah. I bet. And then that's that moment I did like this. Yeah. And then like that, I was like, that's the one. They was like, ooh, I like the yeah. whole that. Yeah. This yeah. is nice. This is nice. <laughs> I like it. Okay, I definitely see like the old school Missy Buster Rhymes mm -hmm. type of type of vibe with it. I definitely see it. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Trapped in the days. Trapped, trapped in, in the, the days. I like the concept. It's 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 nice when you can tie something together that the meaning is in front of your face, but you may not pick it up. Mm-hmm. Until someone reminds you, you reminded you bringing up like, yeah, I was trapped in the in the jacket. Yeah. I was already say trapped in the closet. Like, okay. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's early in the morning, uh -uh. and um, <laughs> but now nah, when you when you when you when something's right in front of our face, and then you remind me of it, it's like, okay, yeah, it's easy to put two and two together now. I love right. hidden things like that. I try to do the same thing. Because for us, it was like, let's make it make sense. Yeah. Like, if it's called Trapped in the Days, let's portray that in mm -hmm. a way. So, yep. I like it. Shout out to them. I'm glad I had a team. It just really came together. Yeah. Um, And that is good, because you said you usually work, like, and do stuff by yourself, right? I do, yeah. What's the... um? What's the difference between having a team and getting certain projects done compared to by yourself? I guess really just having more ideas that I probably wouldn't think about. Like I'm very creative on my own. And then I'm the only child. I've always, you know, I grew up by myself. Like I'm, I got a lot of family and cousins and friends and stuff. But being the only child, you do a lot of stuff by yourself. Mm. So I was already just used to just doing everything by myself, coming up with all the ideas and stuff. But it was like, I want this to be big. If I want this to be big and really impact my career in the way that I feel and see it is, I need to go all out. I need to bring some other people involved so that we can really sit down and make this what I really wanted to be. Cause you, it takes a team. Like you can't do it all by yourself. Yeah, it's very much easier with a team. And shit, I'm living testimony of that today. Shout out Jonesy. Came Shout through, out Jonesy. helped out with the cameras and lights with this. It even just looks and feels so much better, but yeah. I don't know a single fucking thing about cameras and lighting. <laughs> yeah. Day by day, the name Day by Day is literally because everything up to this point has been done day by fucking day. Yeah. <laughs> like, this was not just I woke up last week and I made this what it is. This is three years of plenty, and I mean plenty of trial and error. Mm -hmm. I don't know shit about cameras, so I just kind of set shit up, but Jonesy, who was a videographer, um, hit him up on IG. I'm going to tag him in the uh, uh, video description, but came through, helped with the cameras and lights and whatnot, and, you know, I would... It, it probably been a year maybe before I would have figured out to do something like this on my own. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But the team to have, you know, a different perspective of something, it really does help. It does. A yeah. lot. Like you said, yeah, it's, it's spot on really. It's spot on. Yeah. Um, well, let's take it back now. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's talk about coming up. Um, yeah. so how long did, so have you lived in DC your whole life? Like how was I it have, up? yeah, I've been in DC my whole life. And then I moved to Maryland. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, born and raised in like a uh, Brooklyn area in DC, Northeast. Um, I really like started getting into music. So this is a crazy story. I always tell it up, but this is literally how it happened. Cause I didn't think about producing until this moment. I was like 13, right? And we were in class and shout out Mr. Pendleton. He was a teacher. Um, I think everybody was just rowdy and yelling and Whatever, nobody was paying attention to Was him. this middle school? This is middle school. Middle school were the worst days. Yeah, so he was like, I don't know, but he was like, what do y'all want to be when y'all grow up? Because I think we were just irritating the hell out of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I lied to you not, some, something was like, raise your hand and say music producer. And I was like, music producer? Like, I, I was so unsure, but it was really God 
telling me or giving me my purpose at that moment. So like even at that moment, I didn't know nothing about music producing. I, I knew whatever you heard on the radio, the music part was the producer. I didn't know much about it. But when I said that, I, um, you know, I went home and told my dad, and I skipped this part. I used to be in the studio with my dad all the time when I was like four, between four and seven, he used to rap. He was in a rap group called Platinum World. So I was always in that environment. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm a kid, I'm not paying attention, but I do remember like walking in the studio, right? The walls is painted black. It's a bunch of signatures on the wall from everybody that came in there. Then I remember walking in the booth and something happening with my ears. And I'm like, dang, like, what's going on? You know what I mean? But I was yeah. so young, but I was in that environment. So when I went home after that day, when I was in class and told him that, I promise he, he believed in it way quicker than I believed in it. Mm. He just knew it for yeah. some reason. He was like, oh shit, let's do it, bet. And, 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 our, and our elders usually do. They usually mm -hmm. do believe it's, it's elders, teachers, mentors, coaches. It's always someone older than us that believes in it, that sees it before we even see it. Yeah. And we realize it, you know, later on down the road, a couple years or whatever. But it's always that one or two people that see it way before you do. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yo, why are you so geeked about it? For like, real? <laughs> I'm, I'm chilling. Like, why are you so turned up? Like, I ain't even... But it's because they see that shit. They, they like, seen yeah. I've seen a million people who said what you just said. And none of them have what you have right now. That's why I know you have it. Let's go. Come on. And you're like, what do you mean? Come on. I'm chilling. Like, I'm... But they see that shit. Yeah. And that's what your dad went through. That's what he did. Like, even really, I was like, he bought me my first real keyboard, which is a Korg M3 keyboard. That joint was like 1200 Mm. I was like, you really like putting money into this? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you just spent $1,200 on this keyboard. Like, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I really have to learn. But it's really what you saying. He's seen that shit. Mm -hmm. He's like, let's go. Let's do it. What did you end up doing with the keyboard? I got like 400 beats on that joint to this mm. day. I still have it. Nice. Yeah. I, all my first beats ever. I can literally go back to it and listen to them now. Yeah. Like all my first beats is right there on it and I still have it. So that was just me really experimenting and learning about everything that I that's in me with music. Mm -hmm. All that is poured out right on that keyboard. Making those beats. Let me ask you, what's the difference between a producer and a beat maker? Great question. A beat maker, like they really, they'll make beats and they'll just send them jumps out. They not really a part of the process. So for me as a producer, like, yeah, if even if I send you the beat, I might want to be in the session too. I want I'm I'm gonna throw my input in for what I hear. I might be in a mixing session too. Like I got input. I'm a part of that whole process from it being like just the the recording process up into the record process. Mm -hmm. And even when you put it out, I'm gonna push it. I'm gonna be involved. That's what a producer does. A beat maker, they're not really involved in none of that. They just making beats and sending it out and mm -hmm. you do artists, you do whatever you want to do with it. Just pay me my money. That's how that go. So why not why would you want to be a producer, being a part of it, being involved? It sounds like the beat maker would be easier. You're just sending beats and sending it out. Why wouldn't you just want to be in the beat making space where you could just make a song, send it out, get cashed out for it, and move on to the next? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm I'm just more deep connected with it. Like it's it's my music. Like mm -hmm. this is my create. It's like my baby. Yeah. Like and I make my shit from the soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like. When it comes to that, I want to be a part of all that. Cause and even I believe, I believe whatever we making can be big. I mm -hmm. believe whatever we making can impact the world. Right. So it's like I'm trying to be a part of that for real. For real. Like, I'm not saying beat makers they don't care about their music, but for me, it's a deep connection yeah. with my music that I make and create. They may not, yeah, they may not care, but but I, I would assume that when it comes to beat makers, maybe that's someone who realizes they have a talent of beat making, mm -hmm. but they may not per se have the passion of music that someone right. like yourself would have. So they're like, I mean, I don't really care what happens with it afterwards. I'm good at this. Let me go ahead and make money off it and keep it pushing. Um, kind of com to compare it to something that has nothing to do with music. Um, it's just because it just reminded me of it. Mm -hmm. Me and my dog, Desi. I have mm -hmm. a female bull terrier named Desi. And, you know, when I first got her, everyone was like, yo, when you breeding her? When you breeding her? When mm -hmm. you when you going to breed her? Like, <laughs> I, want, I want some of her puppies and whatnot. I've never had Desi bred because I don't want to be... I'm a, I'm a dog person. Yeah. I fuck with dogs. Dogs fuck with me. But I'm not necessarily a breeder just to get a bag yeah you know i don't I mean? really agree too much with that yeah I, like yeah. some people will have their their female pup or their bitch go through 
plenty so much plenty of litters for that money just to get that chicken right yeah, and man. i'm like i i just i could have made a killing off have you ever seen one of those in person not up close like today yeah yeah not really up close no, like today i no pet her and everything i'm like oh no <laughs> one sees that breed yeah, no one has seen Friday. See her, that's the only yeah. time you've seen that breed of dog is on next Friday. People every day, oh, that's Chico. I could have made a killing with Desi. Easily. I guess you could say she's rare, right? Very rare. But, you know, I, again, I didn't want to put her through that just to get a bag off of it. Not only that, similar to how you said, the music is your baby. Mm -hmm. That's a part of you. Desi's puppies will essentially be my puppies. Yeah. Desi was hell. For the first two years of her life. <laughs> I mean, absolute hell. That was the most, that was the biggest lesson of patience I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine five to seven people being fully committed to that. And then if they didn't, then I don't I wouldn't want them to just give the puppy away or do anything with it. Yeah. I would have to ask for the puppy back. Yeah. And then I don't want to end up with a house full of dogs. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's very similar to that. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's deeper than the surface. Now, then you have some people that are breeders that do it just for the bag. Mm -hmm. They don't care where the puppy ends up. They don't care how many litters the, the bitch done went through or none of that. Mm -hmm. They're going to, they trying to get that chicken. Yeah. Right? So it's essentially the same thing, like you said, um, with the producer and whatnot. Um, so who were some of your favorite uh, artists, groups, and or producers coming up? Mm -hmm. Great question. So like... Justice League is one of my favorite producer groups. Justice League, man, like I was studying them a lot. Name some my, of the, name some of the songs that they produced. Um, Maybach music. They did a lot with Rick Ross, and Rick Ross is one of my favorite artists. Like I remember telling a boy this. I was in high school. He was like, "Who's some of your favorite artists?" I said, "Rick Ross." He was like, "I ain't never heard a girl say that." <laughs> I mm. was like, "Cause I love luxury rap and luxury music, and he nice. really gives off that." So. Yeah, really, the name one off the back. The what was the Maybach music? I think they did a lot of his Maybach music, but I think the third, the, the one with Ti, Erica Badu. That's number three. Yeah. Everybody knows oh that joint. How the story goes. <laughs> the drums on that joint. Who? Money machine jet it ring like a mobile phone. Oh yeah. my god! The yeah. the wind yeah. instruments and percussions and okay. everything that joint hit something serious. Yeah, do I see? So them. Then you got uh, the business. They did the Chris Brown joint, the No BS joint, and then they did all the girls in the world with Lil Wayne and them. The whole okay. group. Yeah. Um, the business that was one of my favorite groups too back then. Then you got Pharrell Williams. He's literally on my bucket list. Like I have to work with that man. Yeah. I got to see how he put that process together, man. I, I'm trying to see how do you do this shit. How do you create what you create? Yeah. <laughs> then you got Kanye. Kanye is a hell of a producer too. Um, Missy and Timberland are my people. Like I didn't know Missy produced. She does. She does. Yeah, I didn't she know produces. That. Okay, yes, she definitely produces. Yeah, I didn't know that. yeah, she's she's really an overall creator. Yeah, but she definitely produces. Um, but really with her and Tim, it's like I love how even with Pharrell too though. But you can really identify something that they made. They have their own swag for real. For real. And I really love that about them. Like, and they don't really have a beat tag. For real, and Timberland don't have no beat tag. Yeah, he don't. Like, well, well, also because Timberland and Swiss Beats and all that, that was before beat tags really got popular as well. I, I would say, I, I don't know who was the first to really do it, but I don't know. But beat tags didn't really come as uh, popular as to like more so recently, maybe within the past 10, 15 years or so. But I heard um, Tim do an interview, uh, maybe a year ago or so. And he was talking about how he was trying to create a B tag. Mm. He was like, it just wasn't working out. Mm. He was like, I'm gonna just leave it how it is. And he was trying to make one because he's trying to be with the wave, like you know, just stay okay. consistent. But he yeah. was like, it just wasn't working out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And but, plus, because he he went so long with making them without it that it would have been hard really to try to get into it. Everyone yeah. that has one now, they came into it with one, or maybe on a certain platform they came into it with one mm -hmm. so it was kind of easier to do so so those five produce well you named six technically yeah. but we can put mm -hmm. missy and timberland together yeah. those five that you listed i'm assuming that's like your top five of producers they are in a way i got a couple more but they are yeah they are really a part of my top five though. yeah 
yeah, huge influences. And the one that you would want to work with the most, you said, is Pharrell? Pharrell, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, listen, this is a platform where we speak things into existence. Yep. So we're going to speak that into existence. We're going to manifest that. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen. It has no choice but to happen. That's how I look at this whole music thing with me. Yeah. With Brown Sugar Productions, ain't no plan B. Mm. Like, this has no choice but to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I want to really just impact the world with my music. And then my brand is about representing women and women in a male-dominated industry and just empowering them to be bold and to strive in mm. any male-dominated industry, you know, any industry, period. But that's my goal. And, and, and you are literally the epitome of that because um, besides Missy, which I just learned just now, I don't know any at least that I know of, female producers. Mm -hmm. So you are, you know, you're a, a woman in a man-dominated space and whatnot. And like you said, your brand is to kind of represent that. Yeah. Right? And be strong and be bold about it. Um, so like when you first know, when you first realized this, what you wanted to do, being a producer, which like I said, is in a man-dominated space, were you ever intimidated by that first starting out or was it just easy breeze off the off the rip? You know what, not really, because I've always been a person's like, I hate when you tell me I can't do this because boys do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I used to be like, you can't tell me I can't try to play football if I want to just because that's, no, nah, boys do that. You can't do that. I mm -hmm. hated that. Did you, did you play football? No, not really. Okay, gotcha. I, I played well, around I was... a little bit, but no, I didn't yeah, play no I see what football. you're saying. saying. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, or even anything, it's like, you can't do this, watch. Mm. I'm gonna show you I can do it. Yeah. That was always like just who I was. So music production, when it, yeah, it taught me on the shoulder like that, I'm like, oh yeah, and you don't see many girls doing it. Mm -hmm. And it might be like, people be like, so you wanna do that? I don't never, I don't know no girls that do that. Okay, well, I'm gonna do it and mm -hmm. watch how I do it and watch how I dominate it. Yeah. So what overall made you choose producing and not singing or, or female MCing? Again, it was that tap on the shoulder when really? I was in class. Yeah. That was God. Yeah. He he told me that. I told yeah. you, like, before that moment, I didn't think not one day about music production. Right. So it was it was him. He was him telling me and giving me my purpose at a young age. Mm -hmm. And then that's why is that. Now, you know what, though? People do tell me that, like, when I was at Smith, they was like, I thought you was a rapper. Mm -hmm. You got a hell of a voice. I think you should rap. You probably should rap. I might do it, though. Yeah, I was ready to ask. Have you ever rapped or sing? Because, listen, it's Pharrell and Kanye are both producers. They've gotten on beats. Timbaland has even gotten Kenny, on yeah. beats. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Missy as well. Uh, shoot. Most, I mean, it happens a lot now. Um, yeah, it does. It was someone I was thinking of in particular. But, anyway, like I was saying. So, have you ever, yeah, like, you... By myself. Have you ever tried it at least? Have you ever tried rapping or, you know, freestyling, singing, any of the above? By myself. By yourself? <laughs> I did write a song one day and it's on my computer and nobody's going to ever really hear it, or at least right now at this moment, because I don't know. I, I'm a little shy. I was going to say, are you shy? Yeah, in may a way. May maybe that, maybe, a little bit. maybe that's another reason you're so comfortable being a producer because that you're is. behind the scenes and whatnot. I like the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. Like, even on the album, like, I wanted to at least have my voice in it some way. So that's why I got the intro when I'm having a conversation. Yeah, talking, yeah. It's like, I want you to at least hear my voice in right. any way. But I don't know if I'm ready yet to really hop on the song. Was that during, like, an interview? In or a way, we just we just linked up in a studio. So shout out DC's big homie, the owner of Corner Water, DC's official water. Um, he's, he's one person that was around when Chapter in the Days Volume 1 came out. So for two, I wanted to have a conversation with him just like, because he's seen the growth. Like, yeah. he's seen all of that. Yeah. So we just hooked up in the studio, pressed play, let it record, and just talked. Mm. And that's how we did that. Yeah, it was. you could tell it was definitely, you could tell y'all were definitely hitting on, you know, uh, good, you know, good points, good topics, uh, good subjects about you being, again, uh, a woman producing a man-dominated space and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did like the intro. I like that. Nice, nice. That's what's up. So who were some of your favorite, um, it could be man or woman, just artists uh, coming up. up? Yeah. Mm, so many. Let's see. Let me go back to a certain time. Got Erica Badu. Bad lady. Um, like Jill Scott. Mm, Jelly from Philly. Rocking the microphone. Um. Yeah, she from Philly. She's from Philly. Miss Jilly from Philly. You saw the show with the microphone? Oh yeah, you would oh, like no, it. I saw the show with my bike and everything. Okay, yeah, I was already saying you would like the microphone act, Jonesy. 
Uh, more artists. There's so many. Right. Um, in a way, Fifty Cent coming up for me. He was hard. Jay Z. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Didn't mean to cut you off. No. Yeah. For the first time in thirty years, mm -hmm. a hip hop record has not reached top of the Billboard 100 list. Right? Ain't that like the round? What it? In thirty years, that's what it, that's what it say. Let me let me double check. I think so. Like they even saying, they saying even in hip hop this year alone or last year, nothing Sound reached like top. That. Yeah, nothing reached top twenty or top fifty or something yeah. for a long time too. Or even like international, like Afro. Okay, here it's we go. killing it. Yeah. Here we go. Let me let me yeah. set that properly. So for the first time in 30 years, a hip hop album or single has not yield at number one on the billboard list. 30 years. It's a long time. Either. Either. Album or song for the first time in 30 years has not reached number one on billboard list. This year? In 2023. In 2023, okay. For the first time in 30 years. That's what it was I heard, yeah. Why do you think that is? You know what? I I think that we're just staring in a certain direction with music. Um, I'm not gonna say it's just not as, yeah, no, it's not as conscious anymore. And it doesn't mean you have to be a conscious, conscious rapper or artist, but there's not much meaning to the music. Like back in the day, you would play a song or whatever, and it would inspire you, or you or somebody would really be telling their story about their life. And that song, and it'll hit you different. Now, it's not like, um, it's just rhymes being put together. The shit don't even make sense. Really. If that, and if it is, some some of the rhymes are elementary as fuck. Yeah, and it's that too. I feel like it's a lot of people that's getting, that's popping off that it's like, they just, it's just the internet. They're just going viral, and now they got, got the bag, they got the money, but then the music is not backing it up. Well, that's what you need to pop off. See, in the past, you had to actually have some fucking bars to pop off. Mm -hmm. You had to have some bars. Now, no. What rules the world now is fucking attention. That is the number one thing that rules the world today. So if you have attention via social media, it doesn't matter what you're trying to do with it. Past that, you're going to do it. Um, what's it? Logan Ryan, Jake Ryan, Jake Paul, whatever those dudes' name mm -hmm. is. They had crazy attention from social media and YouTube. Mm -hmm. They stepped in the boxing world and the, the younger one is dominating because he came in with attention. A lot of artists, they come into the world, their song can be trash, but if it's catchy and it brings a lot of attention... You're gonna run. You're gonna hit the ground running with it. Anything you want to do, it doesn't matter. If you have attention, then these brands and these big companies and corporations, they're gonna find you and have you partner with them, and y'all gonna take off and hit the ground running. So it don't matter about MCing. Before you had to actually have skills, and that's to, the problem, I think. Yeah, to get to get put in, on in a way. I mean, mm -hmm. That's the problem because mm -hmm. people like. You know, we all need, we need a bag. We need money. We want to live comfortable. So it's like those people that really just blow up. They probably really played, prayed for really that money or whatever. But it's just like, that's, I think that's the issue. The music is not really <laughs> too intentional. It's just like, oh, I know a lot of people. Oh, I'm famous. I'm about to just do whatever. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's why we're kind of going in the wrong direction in the music industry in a way. And it's like rap is one of those things where like people, a lot of people, celebrities, whatever, even if they have nothing, they shouldn't be in the realm at all. They should be completely somewhere elsewhere. Why is rap one of those things where people feel cool if they do it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the second you see someone try to act cool on TV or whatever, they rap. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't sing. They don't hum. They don't play an instrument. They rap. They rap. Yeah, it's they like rap rapping is associated with being cool no matter what color, no matter what race you are or anything. And I'll say this. Rap doesn't belong to black people. It doesn't. Even though we started it, you know, in the Bronx and whatnot, it doesn't necessarily belong to black people. I'll, I'll put that out there because, I mean, I I think Eminem is the is top three greatest MCs of all time, at least mm -hmm. Slim Shady. But so I won't say it belongs to us, but it's definitely it's like basketball. Basketball doesn't belong to black people. We damn sure dominate that shit. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I just say that to say it's weird how 
on TV shows, in person, whatever it is, whenever someone wants to act cool, they rap. They want to rap. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I never really thought of it like that. Yeah, I've just noticed that. Like, look at shows. Like, look at shows in, like, the early 2000s and 90s or whatever, and, like, they would rap to kind of to fill in or be cool or, you know, what they you say. You know why, though? Now I'm thinking about it, like, around the time when hip-hop started, it was cool. I mm-hmm. think that's what it was. When hip hop started, it was a cool thing. Mm-hmm. Even the rappers, they were cool people that were, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's why. I think the way it started and the way it was birthed, it was cool. But then yeah. again, not even talk about the lyrics, because some of them was really going through real shit and mm-hmm. their lyrics about real shit and what mm-hmm. they were saying. Like people like Nas and Jay, like yeah. they was going through some shit, so they was just putting it on in that music. But when you had like the real hip hop like coming out of the um kind of like that disco era. And then it went into hip hop. Hip hop was cool, mm-hmm. and I think that's why. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just thinking about it here, and you say, I think that's why. It's well, cool what is it thing. now? Since it, if it was cool then, what is hip hop now? Still cool. Still cool. Mm-hmm. But now it's just the um, ratchet and trapped out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's exactly. ratchet and trapped the fuck out. I exactly. saw a video on Instagram, and you know, shout out to her because she she's hot. She's doing her thing right now. Sexy red. She was performing somewhere doing her uh pound town joint and during the hook she muted she you know she muted her mic and it was probably about 20 30,000 women mostly screaming they coochie pink and they booty hole brown <laughs> <laughs> like she 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 put the mic down to let them sing it like coochie pink booty hole brown like the whole stadium <laughs> sung that shit and i thought that was fucking amazing yeah but like we said it's that's where we at now um, mm-hmm. Speaking of that, let me ask you something. Two things. The first question is, who do you think, it could be from 80s, 90s, all the way up to now, if you could pick one, the most influential person or group in hip-hop rap history? Who? I told you you should have got a mic, Jonesy. Fucking you know what? I think you. I'll say Run DMC. I like that answer. And I'll say that too because... Even with them, that's when you really start seeing style come into play. Like they would, the Adidas down to the T, but then mm-hmm. that's like gold chains, the gold, the gold all ropes. All of that, the gold ropes. So, and in hip hop, the jewelry is important. Yeah. The styles and the stylists, they're important. Whatever you wearing is important. Yeah. So I definitely would say them because they hit it overall. Then they was Shout dancing and everything. Rick. They was. And they had the rock. They're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They had the mm-hmm. rock collaboration because they did. What was it Walk This Way with Aerosmith? Smith? Mm-hmm. So they, you know, they bring. It wasn't just this is hip hop. It's black owned, and we're going to stick to this. Nah, they reached that. They collabed with Aerosmith Smith Beastie and Boys. Beastie Boys. Yeah, Def Jam brought Beastie Boys. Um, you know, shout out to Russell Simmons and um, uh, Rick Rubin. So you know, they they did more than just rap. Like they exactly. definitely were very diverse and versatile with it. Yep. Um, my answer for uh for Jonesy, who was yours? Jonesy's NWA. was NWA. Okay, yeah. Okay, why well, I told you the fucking mic. Why why NWA? <laughs> NWA, like, like she said. And they wasn't playing around. And with they didn't give the, a fuck. They yeah, didn't give a fuck. With, with fuck the police. They didn't give a fuck. Nobody at that time when you heard that, it was like Yeah. So so the gangs so well, well, Snoop came from Dr. Dre, who came from NWA. So mm-hmm. I can see what you're saying. Like the gangster rap era was pioneered from NWA. They, they, took, they took rap. Okay, I like the NWA. Those are great answers, because Run DMC definitely influential and shit. I would say are pioneers of rap groups have to be. Yeah, have to be, be pioneers of rap groups. And then NWA. Now that I think of it, was one of the first to birth like the whole gangster rap scene and whatnot. My answer for most influential person or group in hip hop rap history. I'm gonna go with Chief Keef. I say Chief Keef. Okay. As of now, I think I can see why. If you that. turn on hip hop rap music in fucking China, <laughs> it'll be a video of at least ten Chinese men, and of those ten, at least five have straps in the fucking video. <laughs> It is very difficult to turn on a music video now and not see people toting fucking straps. <laughs> galore. Uh, I mean fucking galore. Chief Keep that came from Chief fucking Keith in the Chicago drill scene. 
Now, someone may have been doing it in Chicago before Chief Keith, but Chief Keith was the first one to make that shit blow. Ma majority of music now is drill. Maybe not per se how they rap, but the vibe around the song is drill. We see it in a lot of rappers back home in D.C. and Maryland. They strap the fuck up. All the way. It don't make sense to not have it in the video. Exactly. It's, it's not like right. you'll feel lame <laughs> not to do it. Exactly. This The, the John Moran situation. He can't listen to NBA Youngboy without having a strap in the fucking video. He can't do it. That shit comes from fucking Chief Keith. Mm. I think Chief Keith to this day was the most influential uh, uh, person in hip hop history because I mean it's just that's what it is now. A lot of the hot, a lot of the hip hop and rap, majority of it has to be hard. And even if it ain't hard per se, the music video damn sure is. And the first person I saw to really do that consistently was Chief Keith. I don't know, maybe, you know, back then people had straps in the videos every hand and there, but the first person to consistently, it's not a music video unless we have these motherfucking yappas in this bitch, was Chief Keith. Mm -hmm. That's why I gave it to Sosa. Well, let me ask you a question then. Mm -hmm. So, how you feel about trap music and T.I.? You think he really, I mean, I know he did really birth trap. But between him and Gucci, who do you think was the most influential on trap? When it comes to trap, South? oh, that is a great fucking question. Before I answer that, let me shout out to one of the godfathers of trap beats, Lex Luger. Um, mm, if yeah. if, if y'all didn't tune into his episode, make sure that y'all <laughs> did. <laughs> shout out to, oh shout out to Lex Luger, man. A great episode. Seriously, tap in um to my YouTube and just check that one out. But between Ti and Gucci, who's the true OG of trap music? Mm. Technically T.I. Yeah. Te I would say T.I. too. Yeah, technically T.I. But I think Gucci took it to another level because you have to consider the amount of mixtapes. Just about to say that, yeah. That Gucci put out that yeah. was all trap music. And you also have to consider the amount of trap artists that came after Gucci. Mm -hmm. Without WAP, P.B. Longway, Young Thug, maybe Migos, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Dolph. First time I heard those dudes was off of Gucci. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Rich Homie. Um, I'm Future. Yeah. I'm mad you didn't grab a fucking Mike Jonesy. Well, he probably sounded yeah. hella different. Yeah. Yeah. So first time we had all these trap artists that came out of Atlanta, and Atlanta really took the trap scene with full fucking force. All came from Gucci. So technically, T.I. was the first to do it. I think Jeezy was the hardest to do it. Yeah. But I think Gucci was the most consistent and the most bossed up to do it. Yeah. What's your answer? I'll say T.I. But like, I see what you're saying even with Gucci. See, Gucci, like, even at home, I know a lot of people that fuck with Gucci, but... Gucci to me was never really like mainstream until he did like yeah. Lemonade. Yeah. So it was like, it was that mixtape era mm -hmm. that everybody fuck with, everybody was fucking with him was mm -hmm. fucking with what he was doing on that. Now I'm a mainstream girl. Okay. So even when they did the verses, when it was mm -hmm. Gucci yeah, and yeah, Jeezy, yeah. I was Jeezy all day. Cause I'm, I'm just mainstream. Like I, he got the radio shit on lock versus yeah. Gucci. So do you, you think Jeezy won that? Yeah, to I me, do yeah. too. I think I'm if, all day Jeezy. I think if you're making sense, Jeezy won the verses, but people, you know, were riding Gucci's coattail and said Guwap just because it was Guwap. Just because mm -hmm. Guwap smoked a dude that Jeezy knew. Yeah. Just because of the whole situation and the politics, people wanted to ride with Gucci. I cool, cool, I get it. But if you talking about who won that versus, you're and tripping Jeezy if you made. don't say Jeezy won that fucking thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it's crazy because you said how, you know, even back home we listen to Gucci. So I went to uh, college in New York for like two years. And when I was out there, this is 2014, my first year of college and whatnot, 2014, 2015. And um, it was a junior college. JUCOs have people from all over, Alabama, mm -hmm. Texas, Florida, New York. But since we were in New York, it was vast majority in New York and, no, and New Jersey dudes up there. And when I would tell them like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm listening to the guap. They'd be like, Guwap. They'd be like, Gucci. They'd be like, you listen to Gucci, man? What? I'm like, yeah. They'd be like, this nigga listen to Gucci. Mind it was you, like that? Yes. This wow, is, this that's is 20, 2014 or whatnot. Yeah. Like, it was like, Damn. Nick, like, but then luckily I had my Alabama teammates that backed me up. They was like, <laughs> nah, y'all niggas tripping. Mm -hmm. But that's because they didn't know about mixtape WAP. 
they only knew, like you said, Lemonade. Lemonade right might have been the only song by Gucci that they knew, right? They didn't know the mixtapes and whatnot. They didn't know any of that other stuff. But yeah, like when I went up north, like they like looked at me crazy. But as time went on, it changed up a little bit. Because like mm-hmm. I said, without Gucci, wouldn't it be Young Thug? I remember the first time I played Young Thug to a few of my homies from back up north. It was uh, Rolling with him and Pee Wee Longway. And then the intro to the Lean mixtape by Gucci. And um, when Thug snapped on that shit, and then years later, like, yo, that's crazy how you two us, told us about Thug and all that shit. But yeah, like, like Southern artists and Gucci, he didn't, he went, he was successful with going from just that mixtape era to everything beyond. Right. Did you listen to um, Go Go growing up? At one point in my life, that's all the hell I listened to. Yeah. It wasn't even radio enough. It was Go Go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some of your favorite bands. Ooh, reaction. And at the time, I think something was going on. So they had the new reaction band, Backyard, CCB, TOB, Game Over Band. Oh my God, that's one of my faves. You know why? Because I'm an R&B girl. Okay, they were saying that. They was hitting the R&B crank so hard. Nice. So I'm not, I'm not all the way on Go Go. To be honest with you, growing up, mostly like I used to, <laughs> I used to dance the Baltimore Club growing up. Oh, really? You know okay. what I'm saying? I listened to Go-Go a tad bit, but I was never crazy about it. The older I got, the more I liked Go-Go because, like you said, I really like the singing parts. Like, when the when the female singers, you know, really hit some shit. My favorite Go-Go band is Reaction. I only know two bands, but Reaction is my favorite as well. Like, mm-hmm. it was one song, even when I didn't like Go-Go, it was one song I love. You remember it? Yes. Feel Good by Reaction Band. Okay. You know, you know that song? Sing it. Feel Good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That bounce. That's always been my favorite Go Go song, but yeah, that's that's yeah. In, out here in Charlotte, they have a I don't know if it's a Charlotte based Go Go band or a Go Go band that travels from back out the way to come up here and perform over here and there. But it's like a, some spot where like a, they have Go Go's up here. I think they do. I think some I think some bands do travel up here because I know like even for like some homecomings and stuff like Central. I remember one year some band went up to Central. I think it was CCB or something like that. Yeah, 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 they like go go out here in North Carolina. Mm. Um, someone asked me this at work, and I answered. I'm gonna tell you how what I gave them for the answer. Um, but I I, I want to get the answer from you. It was like, yo, you listen to go go go. I was like, not really, but I know some go go songs. Like I know the main ones and whatnot. They was like, all right, top three go go songs of all time. It's like, wow, that's tough. Mm, I think that's tough for me too. I couldn't yeah. really say. Well. I had to lay out the red carpet to you. <laughs> Top three go go songs. Put my phone out forever. Oh, of my phone over there. All time. I don't know, man. Yeah. I gave them, while you're thinking, I'll tell you what I gave them. I said in no particular order, Sexy Lady. Sexy Lady, the man. Um, what else? I said, I said Sexy Lady. I said uh, Overnight Scenario. And maybe sardines. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I said sardines, overnight scenario, and sexy lady. So that was like old school with a pinch of somewhat new school, I guess. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Like, the first two would be mine, but then I got to throw in, because this is for me. Mm-hmm. Reaction, cheat on you. I hope she cheated on you with a basketball player. That was Marsha Ambrose's jump when she came out with that. Mm. But they hit that shit so hard, yo. <laughs> and for like okay. years, that was my favorite. Man, find that jump. Cheat on you reaction band. They hit that bounce so fucking crazy. I'm at that spin I fell in love I took with down. that jump. Reaction band. I fell in love with that jump. Cheat on you. Does Apple have it? Nah, they do have it. Oh yeah, it's up there. And this came out. Yes. As for me, even the, the like the band was on point. Mm-hmm. The keys, everybody, it was given very like professional. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, I, I like Reaction Band. <laughs> I definitely like Reaction Band. Yeah. Okay. Chuck and- Brown, my man too, though. For real, mm-hmm. for real, like. He the godfather, yeah. but his shit will always hit for any age. Mm-hmm. Like any age, Chuck is gonna always hit. You said the first, so what so what was your three? Cheat on you and what were the other two? Um Sardines and what's it was another one you you named? Overnight scenario? Or no, the, Sexy Lady. Um, sexy Lady. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those were those were like staples. Even if you didn't listen to Go Go, you knew what the fuck those were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know what? It's my fatty. People, like, I had, like, remember, I got family down here, right? 
for them, they knew that shit. If yeah. they didn't know no other song, mm-hmm. they knew that song. That's that, that's a classic. <laughs> that's definitely a classic. And they didn't listen to Go Go. They was Southern people, but they knew. Yeah, it's my fatty. Yeah, they yeah. knew that shit for some reason. I don't know why. Like but I, I said, think when it came out, it really went up on radio, especially yeah. at home. And again, circle back to the beginning. That's when radio was huge. Like it would play. Diff- Speaking of radio, um, I just found out something. Mm-hmm. You listen to Tom Joyner? Like, remember when we was like younger? Did you listen to Tom Joyner? I used to, yeah. Yeah, but you, you know, uh, uh, oh, it's the Tom Joyner morning, morning show. show. Mm-hmm. Hardest man, hardest working man in radio. That was his tag. Mm-hmm. And I recently learned as of to why. Mm-hmm. So for I think it was like eight years, ten years, fourteen years. I'm not sure, but um. So Tom Joyner, this was before I think you could really do different cities within one, maybe before our technology was as advanced. He would do radio, morning radio in Dallas, Texas. Mm-hmm. Around noon, fly to Chicago, two-hour flight, and do evening and night radio in Chicago. Every day? And then week? fly back to Dallas, get some sleep, wake up, do the radio, rinse wow. and repeat. For like... Like 10 years or somewhere yes. around there. Every day. That's impressive. That is fucking that. dedication. Made 14 million a year, which is definitely some nice some incentives. Bad, some nice bag. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, to do such. So he, he he would do his morning show in, in, in Dallas mm-hmm. and then fly to Chicago to do the night show. Two hour flight. Then fly back to Dallas, get some sleep, wake up, rinse some repeat. And the morning, the morning Jones be early. Yeah. They started like five. Yeah, they yeah. yo. Yeah. Kudos to hell. Yeah. So that was that. And I know he had family. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah, that hardest man, hardest working man in radio. I wonder, did he have a helicopter? It was plane. So he was it, always it was booking. footage. It was footage of him on a plane. And he had um, you know, he would bring his own food on the plane. I would have and a helicopter, a person who jumped. Well, I mean, well, well, you would need a jet. Fuck a helicopter, because you're going from Dallas to Chicago. She has a good strong little two hour. That's distance. Uh, yeah. Like if it was going something. if it was going from like Chicago to like Indiana or Milwaukee or Detroit, then cool. You could do a helicopter. But if you're going from the Midwest to the South, well, yeah, you don't have to go too far east or west. I think Texas is, you know, pretty south of Chicago, but still, like, yeah, that's a two-hour flight. Wow. Every day. Shout out to Tom Joyner, man. Who were um Put that work in. some of your favorite radio stations growing up? Um, I mean, we don't have too, too many at home, but 93.9 is definitely yeah, my number one. Yeah. 95 comes after that. And I fuck with 96 because I love the R&B and shit they play. I don't know. So in D.C., did y'all, did 92Q reach D.C.? Yeah, it reaches. Okay. Yeah. Nice. It does nice. reach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's what's up. Um, So before we get out of here, I have a, I have two more questions. I had one that's it's going to hit me soon. The, is your phone good? Oh, it's about to die. Can I cut it off? Yeah, yeah. Do your thing. Do your thing. Cut it off. And, and we can even talk about this on there. One of the best things I've done in my recent life was gone celibate for five months. Wow. Should have been. You know what? I feel like that's not long enough. He said, that's it. And you know what's crazy? My mom said the same thing. She's like, why not a year? I'm going to tell you why. I started, it was just very important for me to do any type of time more than a month in general because I started at a time where I was very sexually driven with the women that I was being involved with Mm -hmm. and spending time with, taking time away from my podcast, taking time away from being productive just to get some ass. Mm, and then half of the, a little bit. Yeah, and then half of the time it was disappointing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if we <laughs> So it wasn't a consistent person. It was a bunch of different Yeah, women oh, it, it was multiple. It was multiple. Um it was one that was consistent kind of and I was like I liked her too. Mm-hmm. But um like I was also very sexually attracted to her. Mm-hmm. And when we stopped messing with each other I was very distraught because I liked her, but also more so because I was so sexually driven to her. And I'm like, yo, you got to really sit back and really like think, did you really like her or did you like the sex y'all was having? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it was that on top of just, you know, uh, multiple partners. But going those five months, I started right after my birthday. So my birthday was November 29th. I had sex on my birthday on November 29th, mm-hmm. which was bad. Wow. It was cool. The sex. No, I can't say that. It smelled. Oh so, no! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a turn off. Literally, 
<laughs> I wish this nigga. And I it was your birthday nigga. too. Oh, Damn. My fucking birthday. Mind you, this was like two weeks after I stopped messing with Shorty that I was actually talking to, that yeah. I really was feeling. Like, I was really feeling Shorty. This was like two weeks after I stopped talking to her. We was having great sex. And for my birthday, I had bullshit sex. I was like, this is fucking backwards. And then, like, a week after that, I tried to have sex with someone else, but I got thrown off for. Whatever reason. So it was just like, yo, this is too much. Yeah. I gotta take a step back. <laughs> I gotta take a step back. And I've been I've been fucking for a long time. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I was like, <laughs> I gotta take a step back. So I did such. Um December first or like some like the beginning of December, like third, fourth, fifth is when I started. So I was going strong. Um I did get head once, but you know. <laughs> That's still sex. Yeah, but uh, it's oral sex. I was cool though. I wasn't like I wasn't, you know, I wasn't geeking after them. So I went strong, and then about five months passed. And here's the here's the crazy part. I've always said that the uh what's that thing called in the contract? The um like the, the non disclosure or something? Nah, yeah. the like the uh fuck. But just, you know, to an exception, I made exceptions. Mm hmm I said Vacations and birthdays, whether it's my birthday or her birthday, vacations and birthdays, cool. Because when I go on vacation, I'm wilding out. <laughs> I'm never sober and I turn into day day. Like right now, I'm day. Uh, day oh, we day. got the same nickname. Yeah, oh, you got which one? Day or day day? Day day. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, both. Both. See what <laughs> really? I'm saying? So this really is a day by day podcast. <laughs> so when I turn into day day on vacations, somebody's daughter isn't safe. <laughs> he go ham. <laughs> Or daughters. So I know you've been to Miami before. I haven't. I just feel like I haven't. <gasps> I, I would lose my fucking mind. I haven't been to Miami. You would definitely been, lose your mind. I've been on a cruise. I've lost my mind on a cruise and um, the West Coast, Miami? Vegas. Okay, yeah. I always, I always cool. have a great time in Vegas. But um, so, um, so those are my stipulations, right? Mm -hmm. So it was one one girl I met out here. She was on vacation for her birthday in Charlotte. Okay. So I mean, it was like I, I was like, okay, bet. But that that opened up the floodgates. After that, it was like, all right. But I, I don't be, I don't press nothing. I don't chase nothing. At this point, the only time I have sex and if, if is if it falls on my lap. But that's good because it's been situations where I've kind of gone out my way and chased. Yeah. Like before. But I like turned the, sh I've turned shit down. I've been dubbing shit. I porn, like text my phone. I look at it. Boom, and that's it. I don't respond to any types of shit. Yeah. How big of you? Yo, and that wouldn't have come, even though it was only five months, that wouldn't have came if I didn't, no pun intended, use those five months to get right. So wait, these five months, how long ago was that? Or is this recent? This how was recent. recent. So okay. I started in November or the end of November and I ended it on Easter Monday. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Sunday. <laughs> Okay, celebration of Jesus' birthday, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what, though? Easter Speaking of, <laughs> of celibacy, Glorilla and Sweetie both mentioned in an interview that they went celibate, and when they did that, things changed for them in their career. Six months. They Glo blew up. I don't know how long. they. Did. I think Sweetie went a, a while, or maybe like a year or so. Glorilla was six months. She was six months, yeah. But I, because I know it hit different for women, like, I've, I've been celibate and went celibate before, and it's really just keep me on track. Not saying that if I'm dealing with somebody that I'm a, a, distracted, mm. but I don't know. Just the thought of just really being locked in, ain't even, you not even having sex or nothing. Like, that really for a woman really would lock us in. So, like, even when I heard the both of them say that, I was like, damn, okay. And I'm actually kind of celibate right now, kind of. Mm. It's working how out. Does, how does that work, kind of? Because I have plans this weekend. I'm in Charlotte. And I have a boo here. So when I don't Rome. know how it's going to go this weekend. When in Rome. <laughs> but for the past couple of months, I've been doing good. Well, I mean, are you pressed to remain celibate? Like, Not really. Yeah, I mean, even if, really. even if you, okay, even if, I wouldn't even call it slipping up. I wouldn't even call it slipping up. Even if you enjoy your time once, while that's why I said vacation. While yeah. you're away from home, you're away from your foundation, you're on vacation, then like it doesn't. I don't think it really takes away. 
You know I don't what think I'm so saying? Because when I go back home, I think I'm gonna still just chill again. Exactly, you yeah. will. But you're out here, you're on vacation, you're enjoying yourself. We're, you know, drinking some liqueur that I'm not gonna give a plug to. Because, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you're enjoying yourself. That's why I always said vacation and birthdays are different. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because you're not locked in. It's not like you're home in the studio and you're like, hmm, should I stay in the studio for an extra hour tonight or should I go get some? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So listen. So far, you just made me feel better about this weekend. Though. You should. When in Rome, <laughs> indulge. <laughs> and fuck indulge. Nah, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, well, listen, brown sugar. This was great. This was fun. I enjoyed this. I'm so happy that we made this happen. Um, you know, I love uh, that you came through part of the mm -hmm. Chitlin circuit. <laughs> Um, you know, I love that I was able to uh, be a part of you promoting, expressing, and talking about your your very first studio mm -hmm. album. Um, and if y'all haven't tapped in, make sure that y'all do. Uh, Trapped in the Days with a Z, Volume 2, available on all streaming platforms. All streaming platforms. Even visit my website, y'all, brownsugarprod.com. You can literally learn all about me there. You can check out all my interviews and stuff like that there. You can listen to every project I've dropped. You can read all about me and my mission statement and all of that good stuff. Yeah, because so. she has articles out, y'all. She has articles out. She's yeah, doing a damn popping. thing. Popping. Yeah, yeah. And, and let's just talk about just you being here. Like you said, you have articles and whatnot. Just just talk about the importance of not standing still with your creation. Because it's oh, one yeah. thing to create, but it's a whole nother world with the marketing and promoting side that people neglect. Mm -hmm. They think that kind of take care of itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm guilty of this. You know what I mean? I'm just now realizing I have to really put myself out there and be relentless with it. Just real quick, give a quick spiel on the importance of that. Bet. Because you know what? I had a conversation with somebody before the album dropped and they opened my eyes to something. They was like, think about it. Do you want to promote heavy before it drops or after it drops? Mm. And I was like, wow. They was like, think about it. If you, you promote it a little bit before just to get people going, the cover did that alone. Mm -hmm. Like, as soon as I dropped that, everybody went crazy. And then mm -hmm. it was like, after the drops, that's when I put that 80% of promo mm -hmm. and marketing into the album because it's already out. So now we do tours. Now we do this. Now we do as many interviews as possible. Now we... You know what I mean? Try to get on as many like Spotify playlists as we can. Try to get as many articles as we can. Trying to get people, like you were saying, use the music in their reels on Instagram. Trying to do all that stuff, but put more energy into after the fact. And yeah. that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's a little free game for y'all. Um, Again, shout out to Brown Sugar of Brown Sugar Productions. Came by the laboratory and, um, you know, just provided great insight on her world as a female producer you know, and just, just doing the damn thing. Yep. Thank you for having me. This is great. What's up, Charlotte? And look, if you eat chitlins without hot sauce, something ain't right. Okay, we could talk about it for a yeah, quick second. Talk so talk about it. We we were talking about eating chitlins. Um Jonesy, who was from who was of Ohio descent, said that chitlins is some other shit and he's never ate chitlins yeah. before. <laughs> um respectable. Now, you know, I'm from Maryland, uh Brown Sugar's from DC. Our elders ate chitlins growing up. All of them. They made chitlins growing up. We both vividly remember waking up to a funky ass house <laughs> on days that our family were making chitlins. Um and you know, we both we we've had chitlins before. Yeah, plenty of times. You know what I mean? Pig feet, yeah. Chitlins, pig feet. That's as about as far as I went. Have you ever had chicken gizzards? I love it. Fucking good, right? I love chicken gizzards. The fried ones, oh my god! The fried chicken gizzards. My grandfather used to take me to um, Lexington Market, and it was a chicken spot that had fried chicken gizzards. And the first time I had so it, I was like, good. "What the fuck?" So good. But, but see, with there, hot sauce too. I yeah, hot sauce exactly. With it. Well, see, there you go. Y'all, y'all see it and y'all hear it. We, we, you know what I mean. But we were just, <laughs> we don't live that life no more. At least I don't. Do you? you oh yeah, I do. You still eat chillings? All the way. I'll eat. Uh, yeah. See, I, I will eat pork and everything and stuff like that. Um, you know, shout out to all the vegans and vegetarians. I love that. I really mm -hmm. do like. You know, I'm big on my veggies and stuff because I got my garden and stuff like that. But, but I don't really discriminate. Okay. I mean, <laughs> give me some ribs or all that. I'm Shalom. <laughs> Shalom. Yeah, I, I gave up on the chitlins. But, I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, so so we were both saying the rules to eat chitlins were, you said? Drenched in, in hot sauce. Texas Pete. What about vinegar? Specific. Um, Yeah, vinegar too. Yeah, we did vinegar. Hot sauce vinegar and vinegar. Too. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I Yo, that, so. Jonesy's face right now. Hey, like, what? <laughs> we gotta let him try it. What the fuck, y'all? We could buy you some chitlins. 
Oh yeah. my God, Jonesy's face was priceless right there. Yeah, I let him try, man. You gotta hook him up one day. I'm just telling you what we've been. Listen, my <laughs> listen. My grandfather was from Birmingham, Alabama, and my grandmother's from Eastern Shore, Maryland. Those are two very country places. <laughs> so you know what? You know what my grandma calls me? What? A city girl with southern charm. I can see that. I can she definitely, definitely see, I can I can see you being a southern girl. Like seriously, really you am. you do give off southern girl vibes, but I can tell just off of your demeanor and your accent for damn sure that you're from DC. Mm -hmm. But you do have some southern vibes to you. I can definitely see that. Um Jonesy, there's plenty of spots in Charlotte that make chitlins. <laughs> We're going to have to hit one up one day. You got to take them, man. Yeah. I, you gonna have to take them cuz he's not going on his own. Yeah, and I'm not I'm I probably won't even eat it myself, but I just want to see you at least try chitlins once. Just to get well, I didn't try a lot of things. I didn't eat ass all type of shit. I'm not <laughs> Well, you're a you well, then you get you some pig yeah, feet. Yeah, you're essentially you oh, suck toes, not pig feet. If bro. you <laughs> ate ass, then you can eat chitlins. It's essentially the same right. thing. Pig, How you know it tastes different? It's it, it ch chitlins is ass. It's pig ass. <laughs> it's essentially the same thing. Okay, I give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try he, it said, out. he said he said, "Well, I did eat shorty ass crazy that one night. In that case, fuck it. Why not? It was about the, it's about the same thing. Why it can't not? be that different. It ain't that bad. <laughs> well, listen, man. Um. Uh, it's crazy to end on chitlin and eating ass, but you know that's what it is. Um, everybody that tuned in, I really appreciate y'all. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your respective podcast platform, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and more, I truly appreciate y'all. Just ask that you like and subscribe and give me feedback. Por favor, I have a questionnaire linked in the description of this episode, which allows you to give feedback on a day by day podcast. It takes literally two to three minutes, no more. I really appreciate it if you submit that. And I also appreciate Brown Sugar of Brown Sugar Productions. Thank you for having me. Thank you for pulling up all the way from D.C. D.C. in the building. Shout out to D.C. Shout out to DMV. Yep. Shout out to DMV. And we here. And um, that's how we do it. Shout out to Jonesy as well behind the scenes. Next time you got to get a mic. I told you <laughs> you should have had a fucking mic. But nonetheless, we here. We made it happen. Um, but until next time, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that y'all stay safe. Stay sane. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, stay blessed. Peace. Brown Sugar, day by day.